Today, I like to talk on a very specific topic. Uh, the subject is called Samiddhi Sutta. Samiddhi is uh, this discourse we find in Anguttara Nikaya. No, uh, Samyutta Nikaya. Sangita Nikaya. When uh, Buddha was living in uh, uh, Rajaga in the hot spring park, there was a park where there were a lot of hot springs. He was dwelling there. And then uh, when the Samiddhi uh, got up from his uh, uh, night rest, resting, and uh, did a walking meditation. After doing walking meditation, he felt it, he, he was perspired. And then he did not want to sit again on the cushion with the perspiration, with the sweat. So he thought of uh, going to a spring close by, a hot spring. This was somewhere around maybe uh, 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning, very early in the morning. And then he uh, took, he washed his body and uh, after washing his body, he, st he stood outside uh, on the uh, rock with one under robe. So his uh, upper part of the body is completely exposed. At that time, it is said, the certain uh, deity saw him in this position. Samiti was young, very handsome. After meditation and washing his face, he, he began to, uh, he, he was uh, more shining, more radiant more handsome, with clean body, clean face, and peaceful mind, he looks very handsome. Then the deity came and uh, stood some distance and said, uh, uh, Monks, uh, you uh, Without having enjoyed uh, you, six arm, Bhikkhu, you don't seek arms after you have enjoyed. First enjoy, Bhikkhu, then seek arms. Don't let the time pass you by. Meaning, you are young, Without enjoying, you are young, with uh, youthful appearance, with dark black hair, a smooth shining body, and this is the time for you to enjoy sensual pleasure. Without enjoying sensual pleasure, you have become a bhikkhu, monk. Don't waste this time. This is a, this time will not come back again. This is the only opportunity for you to enjoy. 
when you are old with uh, feeble body, feeble mind, uh, you cannot enjoy sensual pleasure. You must enjoy it when you are young. Don't waste your time. After enjoying sensual pleasure, then you go, you become a monk. And he says that without having enjoyed the enjoy seek arms because you don't seek arms after you have enjoyed. First enjoy because then seek arms. Then become a better seeking arms. And then the monk said, uh, when Samit said, I do not know what the time might be. The time is hidden and cannot be seen. Hence, without enjoying, I seek arms. Don't let the time pass by. He uses the, the deity's own uh, language and said, uh, I do not know what the time might be. I do not know what the time might be means. I do not know when I will die. There are five things that we don't know. The life how long we live, when we die, uh, what time, we don't know. We die when we are, con when we are conceived in the mother's womb. During that time we can die. During that nine months in the mother's womb we can die. At birth we can die. Soon after birth, we can die. In one year, we can die. Two years, we can die. Ten years, fifteen years, there are more opportunities for dying than for living. A snake can bite, accident might be, car accident, motorcycle accident, car accident, cancer, uh, diabetes, high blood pressure cholesterol, heart attack, stroke, anything, anytime we can die. And therefore I don't know. I don't know if, if, we, if I keep enjoying sensual pressures, I will not have time to become a monk. Because while enjoying sensual pressure, I can die. There's no guarantee. Then, what kind of uh, disease can kill me? As I mentioned, we can die of a, a heart attack and diabetes or cholesterol, stroke or uh, any kind of uh, pancreatic cancer, uh, liver cancer, uh, kidney failure, uh, lung cancer, anything, any kind of disease can happen to us. So, if, while you are enjoying pleasure, if, we, if one of these uh, diseases attack me, I will die. And now there is no uh, moment. Uh, today, tomorrow, day after, there is no time. And there is no place where we die. Sometimes we live in the house and to be protected with all doors closed, uh, windows closed, air conditions and so forth. In, that, in the house we can die. When you go out, sometimes outside we can die. When we uh, sit outside, a tree may fall on us. Uh, you know, in place where there are coconut, coconut nuts falls on us, and so forth. Something or other, a snake can bite. We don't know. 
and we don't know where this body will be uh, buried or cremated. We don't know. And also we don't know where we, we, we will be born. Only the Buddha can tell us where we will be born because he is the one who sees everything. But we don't know where we will be born. And therefore, there is no sign for that. Therefore, I, uh, I don't want to uh, spend time enjoying pleasures. I want to end this suffering. As soon as possible, I want to end the suffering. As soon as possible. And Buddha said, enjoyment of pleasure as more dangerous than, than uh, uh, the benefit. Not so many people think about it, but that is true. Enjoyment has a lot of uh, dangers in it. And therefore I want to I, this is the you know, very important time in my life because when I am old, even if I become a monk, I cannot learn, I cannot sit in one place to meditate, I cannot read, I cannot hear well, I cannot see well, I cannot do walking meditation when we try to walk. To do walk a we will, you know, fall because my legs are not very strong, legs are weak. I had to use a walking stick or two walking sticks. <laughs> so, so many problems are there when we are old. Even if I become a monk, when I, if I become a monk as a, an old person. I cannot fulfill monk duties. I cannot give Dhamma talks. I cannot remember things. There are so many problems in old age. And therefore, this is the best time for me to uh, become a monk. So I became a monk. Then the deity, he said, I abandoned this. Uh, uh, right. So the deity said, no, this is a visible, experiential uh, life. You can experience pleasure right now. If you enjoy, uh, give up the pleasure that you enjoy right now, you are looking for something that you don't know what will, what, what, whether it happens or not. Your liberation from samsara is uh, we don't know when it happens. Enjoy now. He said, no. I see Dhamma in us now. I have abandoned this uncertainty of life. Life is uncertain. We have lived long enough to understand how uncertain this life is. And therefore I want to use my own Dhamma within myself. Uh, so this Dhamma is uh, Dhamma is directly visible. Dhamma is directly visible. The sensual pleasure is not directly visible, it is nebulous. It can happen, it can, it may not happen. Pleasure may happen sometimes, pleasure may happen sometimes, sometimes there may not be any pleasure. Then uh, this is visible. What is visible? When greed arises, I experience it. 
Then hatred arises, I experience it. Then delusion arises, I experience it. And then it is right here and now, in this very moment, I experience it. Everything else is nebulous. And this truth invites me. Come and see. The truth within myself invites me to see. I can see that. And uh, it is personally experiential. You know, to be personally experienced by the wise. And moreover, Dhamma is unaffected by time, meaning there is no limit. When you have a liberation, there is no limit to liberation. In the pleasure, there is a limit. The limit is when, when you are young, before you get old, during that period, period of youthfulness, you can enjoy. There's a limit. There's a limit. When the limit is hit, you lose interest in it. Anything we enjoy has a limit. Any pleasure we enjoy has a limit. When we see things and we see it again and again and again, then it, it depletes. And then it begins to wear out. Then it begins to, this, uh, what you call, the diminishing return. Pleasure is a diminishing return. But the peace never diminish. It is perpetual, permanent, eternal, unaffected by time. I, I practice this. When the Swami this said to the deity, deity said, ask him to explain it more in detail. Then when the Swami said, now, I don't know very much. I'm a newly ordained. I'm just a newly ordained monk. He called Navaka. Navaka means uh, five years from the ordination up to five years is a Navaka. New. And then up to up to ten years is a new monk. Navaka. After ten is a Thera. Between ten years and twenty years, Thera. After twenty years of my ordination, he is a Mahathir and so forth. When the Swami Jesus I'm a young, new, and therefore I don't know all these details. If you want to know the details, come. Go to see, go to see the Buddha. He is living in uh, Tapola Ram, the hot spring park. Then uh, deity said, well, I'm a very Uh, insignificant person. It is difficult to see the Buddha because all the great deities will be around him and uh, they are number very, will be very large. I will not, may not be able to see him. Then uh, he said, I go, and she said, Deity said, you go and ask this question, ask the Buddha this question. And I also will come to listen to it. So when the Swami went to see the Buddha and uh, uh, he repeated what happened. He repeated uh, his conversation with the Deity in front of the Buddha. He went, bowed down, with respect to him, and sat on one side and repeated what went on uh, between him and the deity. 
then uh, is it if the deity is really true, that deity also might be here right now. Of course, deity has come. He asked the asked in the world, Samiti, I am here, I am here. Please ask, ask. So when the verse Samiti asked, uh, repeated everything. Then uh, Buddha gave the deity and he began to explain. He explained it is very uh, profound explanation. And he said <coughs> Beings who perceive what can be expressed become established in what can be expressed, not fully understanding what can be expressed. They come under the yoke of the death. In Pali, he said this, I just uh, read the translation. Beings who perceive what can be expressed. That means beings who see or uh, perceive the five aggregates. They can see the five aggregates. That is what they can, uh, they perceive it. They perceive it. That means they perceive it. The body, feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness, they perceive mentally. And they establish in the five aggregates. That means we all perceive it and we ourselves are establishing it. Establish in it means we cling to them. That's why we are called Satta. 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 Satta means uh, in Pali it is a Satto, Asatto, the Satto. The being who are clung to the five aggregates. We are clung to form, feeling, perception. Thought and consciousness. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are clinging to it. We are holding to it. Then, those that hold on to the five aggregates are called satta, satta. And we perceive it, perceive the five aggregates, hold on to them. Uh, and they can express their hold into the aggregates. That means we, we, we can say, I love my body. I love my feelings. I love my perception. I love my thoughts. I love my consciousness. That is how we express their clinging to the five aggregates. So long as they are they cling to the five aggregates. They don't understand the danger of clinging to the five aggregates. They know how to cling to it, but they don't know how to, they don't know the danger of clinging. So, when they don't know the they don't know the danger of clinging to the aggregates, then they are under the yoke of Mara. What it is Mara? Mara means all the evils. Mara is evil. Greed is Mara's army. Hate is Mara's army. Delusion Mara Swami, Jealousy Mara Swami, Rivalry Mara Swami, and so forth. These all defilements called 
all defi all the defilement personified as a mara. As long as we are we are clung to our five abrigas, we are under the sway, under the yoke of Mara. But uh, one who uh, having fully understood what can be expressed, one does not conceive one who express, expresses, for that does not exist for him by which one could describe him. So this explanation is even deeper than the previous one. That means one having fully understood by aggregate, understood the form as form, understood the form, understood the feeling, understood the perception, understood the thought and understood the consciousness. Such a person does not, uh, uh, for, that, for that person, when the person understood them very well, then aggregate doesn't exist for that person. Understanding means that body is impermanent, unsatisfactory, without self. Feeling is impermanent, unsatisfactory, without self. Perception, thought, consciousness are impermanent, unsatisfactory, and without self. And that person can express, explain why it is without, why these aggregates are without uh, self. When the person knows impermanence as impermanence, what is impermanence is unsatisfactory, what is unsatisfactory is without self, therefore the person knows this is not mine. Body, body, feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness are not mine. They are not I. They are not myself. They are dependently arisen. That is where the Paticca Samuppada comes in. Dependent origination comes in. So Buddha asks the deity to under, uh, tell him that the, the deity understood what the Buddha said. The deity said, uh, I did not understand the meaning. Please explain it to me. Then Buddha said, uh, or in Pali, I just tell you in English. One who conceives I am equal, better or worse, might on that account engage us in disputes, but to, but one not shaken in the three discriminations does not think I am equal, better, and he is free. What does it mean? It means if one does not have a mana, Mana means, mana is a conceit. We call it pride. Pride. There are primarily three kinds of pride. I am equal to so and so. I am better than so and so. I am worse than so and so. That's why we compare ourselves with others. That is called mana. The Pali word mana is a very meaningful word. Mana means measure. Measure. To measure something, we have uh, 
meters, foot, yard, inches, miles, or ounces, and so forth, various, uh, what you call measures, uh, means we use to measure. Similarly, we measure ourselves with against others. I, I, I. I am equal to so and so in education, in appearance, in beauty, in health, in popularity, and in success, and so forth. I am equal to so and so. Or I am better than so and so in all these things. There is, and then I am worse than so and so. This is a one kind of measuring or comparing. There is another kind of very meaningful comparison that is according to Dhamma, according to mindfulness, that comparison is this body of mind is made up of four elements. Other people's bodies also are made up of four elements. This body of mind is impermanent. Other individuals' bodies also are impermanent. <laughs> this body is unsatisfactory. Others' bodies also are unsatisfactory. This body does not have self. Others' bodies also don't have self. That is the spiritual comparison. When we compare that way, we can treat each other equally. That is really, really wonderful. That is, a, that is how we can practice metta, karuna, mudita, opeka. All this we can practice when we do this spiritual comparison. Now somebody who does not have that will have the mundane material consider that. My, because of that, when we, when we have material mundane comparison called I, 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 I am equal, I am so and so, then there will be dispute. Somebody can challenge. How can you be better than others? <laughs> How can you be equal to so and so? This open the path, road, venue for dispute, argument. But to does one who does not have this kind of mundane comparison. To say I am better, I am equal to so and so, and simply know the truth that we are equal in. When we say we are, I am made up of five aggregates, made up of five aggregates. I cannot say I am better than others because they also are made up of five aggregates. I have a form made up of four elements. Others also are made up of four elements. Their elements are not better than my elements. I am not worse than them. No, no are they worse than me. This is when the person has this kind of uh, understanding. Uh, that person does not have this conceit. Then, <clears throat> Giti said, I still don't understand that. Because they are not uh, mentally inclined towards learning Dhamma, Dhamma learning inclination. Then, <clears throat> Buddha said, the, such a person abandons recognition we also 
want to be recognized. Don't we? If we are not recognized, we get upset. Why is that? Currency is there. And those who abandon recognition did not assume conceit. That person, he cut off craving here for, for name and form. Here that his, uh, uh, the designation for person of Satta, Satta concept vanishes from his mind. Why? He is not clung to five aggregates. And then, when such a person, this, called, this is the description of an Arahant, when one attains that state, he cuts off craving here for name and form, Nama Rupa, mentality and materiality, he completely cuts it off. And then there was an human search for him. And though there was an human search for him, here and beyond, in the heaven or all abodes, they do not find that one whose knots are cut off, whose binding are cut off. Knots are the not you know, we try things huh? that binding. All the binding fact is completely cut off. And such a situation is compared to in Pali, Tarawatukata. Like a palm tree standing, you with a very sharp sword, sharp sword, a very powerful person cut it very quickly. And he, he cut it so quickly, but the, the tree stands. When you look at it from distance, you see the tree is standing, but it is dead already. It is that it can never become life again. Similarly, an enlightened being appear in their form, but they are virtually dead <laughs> in the mundane sense, they are dead. In the supramundane sense, they are ones who live eternally, akalika. They are akalika. And therefore, nobody, when an enlightened person dies, it is said, Mara goes and look for his soul. You cannot find him. You cannot find him. So they cannot find him. Here as human beings, knowing the divine beings, no, in Brahma realms, nowhere else can he find him. And uh, the, when Buddha said, uh, the, then the deity said, I still don't understand, please. <laughs> Buddha said, yes. I make it very simple, he said. He said, okay. This is what it means. Yeah. One should not, one should do no evil in all the worlds. No evil whatsoever. Not by speech, words, or mind. I mean, speech, body, or mind. By speech, no evil. By mind, no evil. 
by body no evil. That means abstaining from all ten unknowns and deeds. All ten unknowns and deeds. The by speech four. By mind. Three. By body. Three. These are called Dasa Akusala. Ten unwholesome. And do ten wholesome things. And then remain mindful with the clear comprehension. What is the clear comprehension? Any moment greed that I say you immediately become aware of it. That is a clear comprehension. You are the only one who knows that the greed is arisen in your mind. Nobody else. When hatred arises in the mind, while walking, for instance, walking meditation, sitting meditation, lying down meditation, if greed arises, you immediately detect it, and then and there you get it away. When hatred arises, know it immediately and then let it go. When delusion arises, immediately become aware of it and let it go. It's called clear comprehension. One should not pursue the painful course that is harmful course. Do not pursue. <clears throat> this is how Buddha simplified the entire discourse for the benefit of this deity. Deity was so pleased the deity attained the stream entry. Buddha gave a very long discourse and gave the summary in a very simple language. See the Buddha's smartness, his compassion. First he tried with the deep, profound discourse. He did not work. But the person was not ready. Then he simplified. That even didn't work. Then finally, he gave the simplest version of his entire discourse. So friends, normally my talk is half an hour, but uh, today I took a little more than that. This discourse is a very, very important discourse. This entire year, I give discourses like this. Since you have been learning for many years now, my uh, attended my Zoom talks uh, several years now. Now I think you are spiritually matured. You have a very good knowledge of Dhamma. And therefore, let me give you some deeper Dhamma talks from now on. Okay, friends, now I want to end this session with our uh, what you call meditation. We meditate uh, <clears throat> few minutes that, that we have, and this is not uh, uh, let me see. Mm -hmm.
Okay, you can see it. Yes, Bante. All right. Now let us begin with the Metta recital. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so to her soul living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness. Above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment. Whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or in a way, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely living here. Not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the world. Now, friend, let us uh, continue with this practice. And uh, <coughs> as I mentioned last week, this is the time to sit up in a straight, upright, relaxed position and breathe very slowly and deeply. That means when you breathe in, take lung full of breath and breathe out all the air in your lungs. It is said that we normally breathe out only 60% of our of air in our lungs. But I suggest, this is from my own experience, I tell you, with effort, deliberately breathe out all the air in your lungs. That means remaining 40% also should be, should come out. Do it deliberately. So next time when you breathe in, lungs will be totally empty and you get lung full of oxygen. During your slow breath, your carbon dioxide builds up, which dilates our arteries and veins so the blood flows very smoothly. You notice it if you have a blood pressure me measuring machine, you check it, you can see the pressure goes down by this Slow inhaling, slow exhaling, slow inhaling, lung full of breath, slow exhaling until the lungs are empty of air. And do this, even if you do it five minutes, after that you may check your blood pressure it will be very low if you have blood pressure. Even if you don't have blood pressure, this slow breathing is very, very important to maintain your good health. So in this meditation, you do breathe slowly 
and during the slow breathing, you can notice impermanence every fraction of a second. Everything you experience is disappearing while inhaling or exhaling. Your feeling fades away, your perception fades away, thought fades away, consciousness fades away. They rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. All the aggregates, rise and fall, rise and fall. This is Vipassana meditation. So I recommend you to do this and you experience it for yourself and see the result. So I stop talking and let you practice.
My means on this meritorious deed. May I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Friends, even though we rang the bell and in this my path, you continue your meditation as long as you can. Now let me conclude my session with my regular metta sharing. May all those who are in hospitals taken care of by various compassionate doctors, nurses, and hospital staff, may they recover very soon and practice Dhamma, meditate, and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, and hospital staffs who take care of these people also find time to practice Dhamma, meditation, and liberate from samsara slavery. And all those who are in various troubled spots, war zones, poverty-stricken, discriminations, and so forth, may they all find some moment for practicing meditation and gain peace and try to attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who are participating in these sessions or not participating, whoever, wherever they are, as we mentioned at the beginning of this meditation session, all living beings, without any exception, everywhere, be well, happy, and peaceful, and finally attain liberation. And I hope you continue your practice, and see you next, next to tomorrow. tomorrow. Thank you, Bhatti. Questions and answers. Sadhu Sadhu. 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 Sadhu